Hey guys, what's going on? So today we're gonna talk about maintainable code, but if you're new around here, my name is Rodolfo. In this channel, we talk about iOS development, tech in general, productivity, and everything in between. So if that's something that you're into, please tap the like button, helps the channel a lot with the algorithm, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can get the next video next time I post. So the idea for this video came from a blog post at Dropbox. I usually save stuff to read later, and in this case, two years later, I finally got to it. Don't judge me. But it's a goodbye blog post to Guido Van Rossum, Guido Van Rossum, I'm probably butchering his name. But he's the creator of Python, and he worked at Dropbox and was leaving at the time. So that's what the text is about. But there's a small part of the text that caught my eye, and that's what I want to talk about here. So the text reads, There was a small number of really smart, really young coders who produced a lot of very clever code that only they could understand, said Van Rossum. That is probably the right attitude to have when you're a really small startup. But as the company grew, new engineers who joined couldn't understand the code. Clever code is usually short and cryptic, written by and for the individual who came up with it, but is hard for anyone else to understand and nearly impossible to maintain. Guido called this cowboy coding culture. He recognized its value in our early stages of trying to implement things quickly, but knew it wouldn't be sustainable over time. So he decided to speak up in his own quiet way. If I encountered clever code that was particularly cryptic and I had to do some maintenance on it, I would probably rewrite it. So I led by example and also by talking to other people. So there are quite a few things to unpack here that I think are interesting. The first one is with regard to really smart coders who produce a lot of code that only they can understand. And that's something that you see happening a lot with juniors and I have certainly been guilty of this as well. You start to learn about a bunch of different things and you want to implement all of that and put it into practice and you end up writing a bunch of things that you think are really clever. For example, like you learn about regular expressions and you start doing stuff with regular expressions that are really cryptic and look really clever, that not even you are going to understand that six months from now when you read that code. And another thing that I see a lot with inexperienced programmers is mistaking efficiency with the number of lines of code that it takes to write something. So what I see often is a pursuit of trying to write something with as few lines of code as possible and something that would be very readable with 10 lines of code turns into four or five lines of code that are not as easy to understand. And in this sense of maintainability and readability, the 10 lines of code are probably going to be more desirable. And that also ties into the fact that you should never assume everyone is going to understand a piece of code that you wrote. One of the things that I actually love about weekends is sometimes I write a piece of code on a Thursday or Friday and then I spend two days without looking at it and then on Monday when I get to work and I go finish a feature or something I look at that code and hmm what is it exactly that I was doing here? And that is usually a good indication that that has to be rewritten in a way, like better thought out. Because if I take more than two seconds to understand something that I wrote two days ago, what is gonna happen six months from now when I haven't been looking at that part of the code for a long period of time? And what's gonna happen when someone else has to read and maintain that code that I wrote six months ago. So we should never assume that something is going to be easy to understand. And that's why I think code reviews are so important. I'm not gonna get too much into it in this video. This might be a subject for another video, like how to do code reviews and stuff. But I really do think that it's extremely valuable, especially in the beginning of your career, like having someone who is more experienced than you look at it and 
maybe say like, oh, I don't even understand what you're saying here, or there is a much better way to do this here. And having that input and feedback is probably going to make you a better programmer and lead you to write more readable and maintainable code. The second thing he says that I thought was interesting is how clever code is usually short and cryptic and written by and for the individual that came up with it. An area where I see this happening a lot is with view code. So when you decide to not use storyboards and interface builder to build your views and you're just doing all of the views with code and I'm talking about UI kit here, not Swift UI, you have to do auto layout and constraints and things like that by hand to position things on the screen uh, in the correct place and sometimes that can get very confusing like if you have something that is using an intrinsic size with a fixed width and height values that you don't know how the person came up with it and then on top of that you have width and height constraints that are not the same or are the same but like why is this like this it just can get very confusing and it can manifest itself in other ways as well like one-liners for example so in iOS you can do ternary with default values mixed in and it can get like quite convoluted and in my personal opinion at least it's not as readable as doing a niflat or a guardlat and the same is true for ifs like the one I'm showing now where you can have the if and the else like in one line or the if and the result of the if and the else and the result of the else like one in each line and those might seem innocent at first but it's much easier for you to misread a one-liner than it is to misread a proper if else statement. So maybe just a personal preference, but I try to avoid one-liners as much as I can. The third piece is where he says, hard to understand, nearly impossible to maintain. And I mean, it's very true. I think it speaks for itself. How can you possibly change something that you don't even understand what's going on in that code? If you need to replace a component or change an API call or something, and you can't even find it in the code where that's being done in the first place, it's gonna take a lot longer to do the maintenance and do what you need to do than if the code was clear and easy to understand in the first place. And what's even more problematic than that is you may end up making a change and breaking something else that you didn't even realize that this had a hook somewhere else in your app. You've done a change really quick, as quick as you uh, could because it was urgent. And if you don't have unit tests or QA and things like that, you may end up breaking something and not even realizing and your users are going to find out about it before you do. The next segment that I thought was interesting was where he says that maintainable code is more important than clever code. And for me, what that means is to have readability in mind when you're writing something. As we've been discussing, see if your variable names are as descriptive as you think they are, if your method signatures, function signatures are as descriptive as they need to be. And just trying to look at it through a lens of how can I make this as readable as possible instead of trying to make it as short and as few lines of code as possible or any other efficiency metric that you might use that may end up hurting uh, readability in the end. Last but not least is leading by example and communication. Now, I've never been a boy scout, but I think there is an old boy scout saying regarding leaving the campsite better than you found it. I think Uncle Bob Martin uh, also has that quote as a recommendation in one of his books. But all that is is try to leave the code better than you found it. Even if it wasn't part of your task, if you're working on a feature, if you're changing a screen in your app or something and you 
see stuff that's cryptic, you see stuff that was harder for you to understand and change, you should take the extra time to rewrite that, make that better, make that cleaner and easier to understand for anyone else who might have to touch that code in the future even if it's you. And communication too, like sometimes something may seem easy for me to understand but it's always good to consult with your team, like get someone to take a look at it and say, hey, I've done this and this way, this is what I was thinking about when I wrote it, what do you think of this piece of code? Is this something that you can easily understand? If you had to maintain it tomorrow, how would you feel about it? Also, like whenever I find something that I think needs to be rewritten, I usually let the other people know like, hey guys, I'm working with this component and it's giving me headache because of this or because of that and I'm thinking about rewriting it in this way or changing this and this in this manner to make it easier. Do you think it's better? Do you think it's worse? Do you think it's going to take too long and we should create a ticket and deal with it some other time? What do you guys think? So that communication usually helps a lot. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave the link in the description for the blog post that we just talked about. If you have any examples of clever code versus readable code that you've found and that you want to share with uh, in the comments, please do that. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to get more videos like this. Hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.